Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This is the second video in a mini-series looking at getting started with Quickly. Quickly is a new toolkit that enhances the Gutenberg Full Site Editor. The first video in the series provides an overview and a tour of the user interface. In this video, we're looking at how to get started by creating your own theme templates. We'll cover the basics of the Full Site Editor and how to build up the structure of your theme using Quickly. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps to spread the word about the channel. Here's my testing site. I've got the 2022 theme with some demo data. And if we go into the dashboard, take a look at plugins, you'll see I have custom post type UI installed, okay, which is what I use to create the book's custom post type. And then the Quickly plugin. And Quickly gives us Advanced Custom Fields Pro, which is this menu item. And it gives us this Quickly admin menu here with a settings and a themer area. Went over all this in the first video, so I'm not going to do it again. And we're going to be looking at the full site editor and the Quickly themer enhancements to the full site editor. Full site editor you get here by going appearance editor. Let's just look in here for a minute. So you see we have all the theme templates. This is where you can edit a template and that takes you into the editor. Here you can set the display conditions and here you can reset the template. This parts feature takes you into the full site editor to theme parts. So there's nothing to see in this quickly themer area. If we click that, we'll go to that other page. There's this global parts area here under the Quickly themer, and I haven't seen any documentation on this. I'm not really sure what it's for. It looks like maybe you'll be able to create some kind of blocks or sections using this. I'm not sure. So because this looks like it's new and in beta, it's not documented, I'm not going to be going in here. And we looked at the settings area here before, so there's nothing we have to look at in this area for this video. Let's just go into look at the full site editor. This site, that's this page. Then there's templates, and these are all the templates that come with the 2022 theme then there are template parts. Now, when you edit a template, it'll have a little dot on it here to show that it's been edited. And when it's been edited, then there'll be a little hot dog menu over here where you can go and reset it back to whatever its default was. Template parts, this is where the headers and footers are. And I suppose we could add our own template parts there. Now we're gonna switch over to the Quickly theme. But before we do that, I just want to remind you what this looks like with a theme. Okay, so now let's go and switch to the Quickly theme and I'll activate it. Now let's go to the front end and take a look and see what it looks like. Oops, nothing there. That's because the Quickly theme is a blank slate theme. You would use the Quickly theme when you want to build up your theme template library yourself. These are the excerpts for the blog, and so this is just showing the content there. We're going to need to start out and create our headers and footer and templates for single and archive. So let's go in now to the full site editor. There is a link, or when you're on the front end, there's a link here. Okay, and I'm going to go to the template parts and we'll edit the header. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you kind of at the start is I went into the global styles and under elements I gave paragraphs a 15 pixel bottom margin so there'd be space between paragraphs. Remember to save it there. And then I went to settings and I changed the breakpoints. You know, use what makes sense to you. This was 90% width, I made it 100%. Then I changed the default padding to 70 from 150. Let's get started. So I'm going to add a section. Then I'm going to add a single column into the section. And in the column, I'm going to add a paragraph block and we'll use the dynamic data option 
to select site title. Then I'm also going to add a menu nav block. When you add the menu, you have to go in here and select one. So I have a simple menu already created, home and books. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the column. This will be my flex container and center space between. And then this, the paragraph, I'm gonna to go to topography and we'll make it 32 pixels and four pixel spacing and uppercase. For the menu, we'll go to menu items, topography, and we'll make those 22. And that can be upper also. And then for spacing, we'll say 40 pixels on the left. All right, let's save that and then go to the front end and see how things are looking. Okay, that's looking okay. Let's go to the section and we'll give it a bottom border of two pixels and make a light gray. Okay, now I've got a lot of, oops, a lot of padding on there so let's change that to be actually let's just remove the padding oh one other thing i did is there's the option to dock this top bar and see how that overlays the columns so it's having trouble so i dock the top bar so it'd be out of the way okay so now we've seen what it looks like on desktop Let's go to the tablet view. And now what I'd like to do is go to layout, flex, and go to row. It's not showing here. I'm not sure why. Be nice if we could preview that there. Developer tools, inspect. Okay, so that's not what I want. I want them to stack. Let's look at the desktop version. Ah, uh, I'm doing it on the wrong. All right, so we want the columns now. Okay, so there's our columns. So let's go to our tablet version. And this one, we'll try this. It'd be nice if it displayed here. All right, I think that uh, the admin bar here is hiding it. So I'm gonna open an incognito window and inspect. All right, so that's not too bad. We can now play with some padding and margins there. Let's go here and on tablet for the menu. I'm going to make it 20 left and right. All right. Let's say 15 at the top and let's save that. Okay, and then we'll say 10 at the bottom. All right, so there's our header. Let's look at different devices. All right, so I think that's fine. There's our header. Let's go now to template parts and do the footer. See, I showed you or told you that when you edit one, there'll be a little dot on it here to show that it's been customized. And if you click here, you can clear that and reset. So if you screw up, you can go clear and start over again. All right, let's do the footer. And I'm going to do kind of the same type of thing. I'm going to add a section. And then inside the section, I'm going to have a single column. And here, I'm going to add an HTML block. Okay, 
I'm just going to paste in, you know, this is the copyright ampersand, C-O-P-Y, semicolon there. And then the year, quickly testing. Okay. Let's go to the column and layout. And then to the section. Let's just clear that and save it. And we'll go to our incognito window and refresh. Okay, so there's our footer. Obviously, you can style these more, whatever. I'm just kind of trying to show the basics of how to set up the structure. So now let's go back. Okay, and let's go to templates now. And let's modify the default index here. Now it's showing. Okay. I guess we left off there. There we go. All right, so this is just the post content. And what I'm gonna do is remove that. And you should probably, at this point, have a good idea of what I'm gonna do here. Let's see. I'm gonna add a section in between the header and footer. Okay, so there's our section. Now let's add the content to it. Post content. Ah, uh, okay, here we go. So this is seeming to be off here. Let's see what's happening with that. Okay, that's 1290, so that's the right size. That's 1920. All right, I bet I typed the wrong size in there for the header. So let's go to the header. I think I can switch here and just edit this. But I'm gonna go back to template parts and do it. Well, that says 1290. All right. Good. Okay, so now that lines up. Okay, so that's the index. Now let's go out of the dashboard and we're going to go to the quickly themer. So we'll add a custom template and this will be home page. And now we'll add our conditions. We'll do show if type is singular and it's the front page. Now we'll go to edit. So we need to add our header or template part. Okay, now we need to add our footer. Okay, and now in between these, we will add a section Okay, and let's go and set the section to be 1290. Okay, and then inside this section, let's see, we want to add a query. And we don't want to inherit from URL. We want to go to the query editor. So you see this gives us a lot of options here for creating a query but we want just something simple. So we want posts, we'll do order by, that looks good, pagination, items per page, we'll say six items per page. And if we look in the list, there's query, but there's no query template anywhere. Ah, what do we do? Well, quickly has this, when you see the stack icon, it means that it'll accept a child block so now we can click and look, we have more items here now. We have query template, okay? And so I think you've probably seen this kind of thing before. We need to add in the elements now. So we need to build up our loop item. So I'm gonna add the image and let's see if that got into the template. Yeah, we will go for the source, choose dynamic data and WordPress and featured image. Okay, good. Now under that, 
we'll add our heading block. Okay, and then the heading will also be dynamic data. Okay, and under that, we'll add a paragraph block. And we'll make this the post excerpt. Let's say 240 characters. All right, and then under that, we'll add a button. Okay, and we'll say read more. If we do link, there's no option there for dynamic data. And if we do this, this is just for the text. So what I'm gonna do is come to the link wrapper and do dynamic and select post URL. Make it active. So let's see, let's save and go take a look on the front end. Okay, let's tweak this a little bit. So the heading, the line height looks a bit much. Let's try 1.5. And then under the heading, let's try adding some margin. And then under the post excerpt, we'll add some margin. And under the read more button, we'll add some margin. Save that and go see how that looks. I think my 1.5 on here, I guess I need to make it less. Let's try 1.2. I can give it some margin above. All right, now let's go to the query. And there's this option here for infinite load more. So we'll turn that on and have it be scroll. Okay, and we'll save. Let's go and refresh. Okay, that's looking good. And as we scroll, we get more uh, posts and if we do read more we go back that is actually going to i can see kind of in the footer that is going to the right place but we haven't created a template for it yet and that's why it's coming back to the home page all right so the next thing to do then will be to create our post template okay now let's do the post single let's go to the quickly themer area and we'll add a custom template We'll call this post single and we'll give it the conditions show if it's single post. Okay, you could do individual ones here if you want to do that, but we don't need to. Okay, so now let's go and edit it. Okay, so we're going to do as we did before and we'll add our header. And then we'll add our footer. Okay, and then we'll add a section in between. And this section is going to be our content area. Let's look at the sizing. I want it to be 1290. And that's good. Now, we want to do the same kinds of things that we were doing before. Let's add a heading block and we'll choose the post title. Okay. And remember in the global settings, there was this dynamic preview. So let's select a post here. And now let's add our featured image under that. Actually, featured image on top is probably good. And let's go and pick the source. And it looks like we need to go to our section. Something's kind of funky here. There we go. That's better. And now 
we need to set the flex direction here. Okay, so here we can, it's an H1. We can give it some margin. Okay, and then under that we will add, this will be fun, <laughs> is the post meta. So I guess what we'll do here is add a column. This is an experiment. Okay, and in the column we will add a quickly paragraph. And this will be dynamic data. And we'll say post date. And then the before will be published on. Okay, and then the after will be a space and a bar and a space. Okay, and then, then we'll add another paragraph. And this one will be the author. We go author name and before we'll say by and after we'll have another space bar space okay and then we'll take a chance here and try one more and this one I'll move that around in a minute this one let's see if we have a comment count there's post comments What happens if we do post comments? That looks like the right thing. So we'll do that. And now let's see if we can move that around a little bit. This one last. All right. And then this column here, let's see. If we go to sizing. We want height. Let's try 25, 30. Let's try 30. Under the comments, we will have our post content. That didn't go where we wanted it. Put that out here. Let's save this and see how it's looking. Or see how one looks. Okay, that's looking all right. Oh, it just says O. Oh. So that is a comment count need to kind of tweak that published on author got cut off so let's see what we can do here let's go out on a limb and let's see let's search for post meta maybe the core block will work better for us well here's post author post date so let's add post author post date and I'm not thinking that's going to work. I don't think that's the right thing. So let's organize this now. So we want here. Actually, I don't think we need post date. So let's move that. And on this one, let's remove the dynamic data and just type by. Whoops by space. Let's see how that's going to look. Uh, close, but we get our avatar. If I can get rid of that avatar, we might be able to go somewhere with that. Let's see, post author. Oh, here, show avatar. Okay, so I'm getting rid of that. And try saving again. All right. So we need a space before by, a space after by. So let's see, a space before by, space after by. And then here, let's go here, and our before text is going to be space number of comments. Oh, let's just say comments. Oh yeah, we need to have space bar space, I think. All right, let's try saving that. Did I not do space? I might not have. Let me check that. But it's not adding spaces there. Kind of funky. 
Yeah, I didn't do a bar. See how we're doing. So when I started this, I said, oh, see how painful it's going to be. I really like some of the page builders give you a post meta widget where you can do all this stuff kind of at once. So not having very good luck with this. Let's try putting some space on this side. And then I don't see that coming through, but let's go to Try adding five there. Sorry it's taking so long. Okay, we're getting close. Now here for this one. All right, finally. Next, let's add a spacer. Okay, and now let's add the comment section. Post comments. That actually looks like maybe a core feature. Post comments ended up there. Save. All right, awesome. Okay, so here's a post single. And now if we go back to the Quickly themer, the next step would be to add more custom templates, like one for page single, and to assign this one to show if single in its page. Okay, and then you do one for books. You do one for your 404 page. And then for the archives, you do like we did for the homepage. I think I've kind of gone through enough that we can see the steps involved in creating your theme templates up from scratch. Obviously, there's a lot more you can do to embellish and make them look beautiful, but this is kind of the basics. So that's the walkthrough of the process. Now let's have a little bit of discussion about the process. We've looked at how to create your theme templates in the full site editor using Quickly. Ultimately, I think that's the way to go, but there are two other options for getting started. You can use a block-based theme from the WordPress theme directory and modify it using Quickly, or the other option is that Quickly comes with a library of pre-designed templates that you can import. I'm going to try to look at these two other options in subsequent videos. There's something I hope you picked up on while watching. That is that Quickly is a power tool. It's going to be harder to learn than Elementor or Beaver Themer, and it's not as easy as the Cadence or Generate Press theme builders. But you have more direct control over the layout and design. As with all things, once you figure out how it works, it's not too hard. But you have to figure it out, and you have to decide if it matches how you want to work. Also remember that the Full Site Editor and Quickly are both new. So there are going to be some quirks and things you have to work around. Hope you found this walkthrough helpful. There's a text summary on the WebTNG website along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. Thank you for watching.